Hello you wonderful magic players out there and welcome to the last video in my series on uh, you know what cards to create for your initial deck and this time it's uh, mono green and <laughs> I think this is one this color is the most difficult color to spend your wild cards on because any green list that I can come up with or you know theory craft uh, al always involves a lot of rare cards so I was very hard pressed to find you know uh, to come up with a set of cards that would actually uh, actually work you know for uh, how, how can I do something useful with my commons and uncommons in this color the problem with green overall is that uh, you know green has a lot of uh, great creatures it has a lot of uh, really strong effects but it's always like the common theme I guess for green is that it's always has problem with card advantage uh, there's it's rare to see you know draw effect on cards except if it's like you know uh, draw a card whenever you uh, play a creature of a certain type or something but except for that it's really difficult to draw cards in green uh, which is why I'm currently uh, experimenting a little bit with a green deck uh, involving involving treasure map uh, we'll see how that uh, turns out uh, maybe I'll post a video on that but for the time being, uh, let's examine green and see, uh, you know, what gems we can find here. Uh, first up is Adventurous Impulse, and Adventurous Impulse <laughs> is uh, a card which, I guess, when you look at it, it seems uh, re really crappy to only look at the top three cards. But if you c compare this to something like Opt, Opt look at looks at one card. If you're deck is entirely creatures and land cards then this is like a super opt for green so uh, i think this is really great in some very particular decks that runs only you know lands and creatures and uh, this card is basically the same card as adventurous impulse except it hits uh, only dinosaurs so if you have a kind of green dinosaur deck uh, then this is like you know the super super duper opt if you will uh, for that kind of deck uh, and I would definitely consider uh, if I run a lot of creatures and a lot of dinosaurs uh, maybe even running both these uh, because you can then uh, maybe pull down your land count and avoid you know late game flooding out with lands the problem with these two cards are if you don't hit anything with them you know you, you've just lost the card so you need to be very careful when you run these cards what kind of combination of uh, uh, combination of cards you're running in your deck you need to make sure that except for these uh, two cards these sorceries you're not running many other other sorceries and instants and i guess that's the uh, real problem with adventurous impulse and community dinosaurs they're really great cards but uh, they kind of restrict you in what you can run in your deck so uh, it makes it really difficult and kind of pigeonholes you into one single very uh, fragile strategy if you want to run uh, those kinds of cards uh, other than that of course there's the Lanoir Elves which I really suggest uh, you get a full play set of but I don't think you need to craft this uh, because I'm pretty certain that this card is uh, is something you get in the starter uh, decks and also you know if you're into pauper you're going to win this in the pauper event right now that's going on um, other than that there's a of course if you're going for merfolks uh, there's a lot of uh, green merfolk cards here but that's uh, that's a very specific strategy uh, and it's uh, I think the Speaking about Merfolks, I think the uh, that the blue uh, green starter deck is probably the strongest starter deck that you get. Uh, it can win against uh, like even uh, even meta decks with a good enough draw, and uh, they're fairly strong. Uh, so if you just want to spice up your uh, you know your starter deck, you can definitely go for a couple of uh, uh, good green cheap merfolks if you want to that's a totally legit uh, way of doing things i think unfortunately one of the best green cards in my opinion pelt collector is a rare card and it only effect 
fits in one type of deck kind of you, only if you have a lot of creatures with uh, you have to have a lot of creatures and things which are bigger than pelt collector basically uh, so I think that's a bit narrow and also it's a rare card I don't know I don't know if I want to spend my precious rare card on this even though this is great so I don't think you will necessarily you know regret uh, making a pelt collector for the future because it's going to probably stay a great card for a long time but um, I don't know uh, there are more versatile cards to build with your very first uh, rare wild cards uh, than a pelt collector shape of sanctuary is another I think underused delighted card it's what I've thought for a long time that green really needs, like if it, if it only had some way to protect its creatures, uh, you know, from being two for one so that you lose value over time, uh, green would be amazing, uh, uh, I thought. And that's half true. Uh, the problem with Shaper Sanctuary is that it doesn't hit uh, stuff which doesn't target uh, things like, such as, you know, sacrifice a creature or maybe uh, you know settle the wreckage and a lot of common removal nowadays uh, uh, doesn't work with but uh, for the less you know for all the you know you get rid of all the shocks you get rid of all the uh, most red removal most black removal uh, becomes fairly useless uh, not useless but uh, you get some value back uh, for playing sanctu uh, shaper sanctuary uh, but it's a rare card, so, you know, moving on. Uh, Prey Upon. Uh, I've experimented a bit with Prey Upon, and I think that it's one of the best... There's a lot of, you know, fight. A creature fights something uh, uh, or another. Uh, and I think this is one of the best ones, simply because it costs one green. But there's a problem with this, and then that's... Uh, that is that uh, if you're going to make, you know, a fight deck where uh, creature fights other creatures, you're probably going to run a dinosaur deck. And then there's a better version which adds a plus counter as well to that dinosaur. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, this probably won't be included in your deck. Uh, other than that, if you're going for that dinosaur strategy, I think... Uh, this is a solid pickup. Uh, uh, when Hatchling dies, uh, you can play dinosaurs uh, as though they had flash, and whenever a uh, dinosaur entered the battlefield, it fights something. And because you're probably running only dinosaurs with enraged triggers, uh, this is a lot of value. Uh, unless your opponent kills this uh, when you play it, uh, you're probably going to kill off some of the opponent's creatures with this uh, and you, you, you basically get a free you know a free fight uh, uh, with one of your dinosaurs and probably a free enraged trigger as well so a really solid pickup uh, the only problem with this card of course is uh, if your opponent doesn't draw any creatures or uh, only creatures in the air or something which uh, fly over the poor hatchling uh, you're going to have a, a bit of trouble uh, but green actually has great ways to combat flyers like you know Vivian Reed and stuff like that which is a card I would actually suggest you build uh, if you're going for a mono green strategy you're kind of forced into building a couple of rares I think uh, it's really hard to make a good deck without uh, some rares in mono green uh, and then you're going to have access to Vivian Reed so probably maybe flyers uh, won't be the biggest uh, you know, problem for you Other than that, mm -mm -mm. the Ancient Animus, uh, I thought would be better than I think it is. Uh, it's an instant, an instant fight uh, card, which gives a plus one, plus one counter. The problem is, uh, it's really hard to find, you know, a legendary creature that you want to run early in green. So, I don't know. <laughs> Hasn't worked out for me. Maybe... Maybe someone else has a good idea how to utilize that card. Uh, other than that, yeah, if you're going for an elf kind of strategy, there's a few, very few kicker cards actually, but there's 
sometimes the alkane druid uh, can uh, actually be worth it and it can produce two green mana in some very you know specific decks but it's not uh, you know uh, or not say that it's a generally uh, a good card uh, what more have we here dryad green seeker uh, i've experimented a bit with this card and i'm uh, hopefully going to post a video of this uh, i'm experimenting with a green card with treasure maps and i think this synergizes very well with a treasure map where you can you know look at your top card and if it's a land you can remove this with uh, you can put it in your hand with your green seeker and that way you have a much better chance of hitting uh, a land every turn with your green seeker and this can become a real you know value producer uh, for your deck uh, so in that kind of strategy if, if you already have treasure maps or if you're planning on building treasure maps then consider really you know do consider a dry green seeker it's worked out great for me uh, so far next page Merfolk branch walker of course uh, you know an out mostly an auto include in most explore decks it's a great card uh, if you use the promo code game awards you're going to have a place at this anyway uh, yeah that's it's a solid card so too is crawl harpooner uh, this card of course uh, since it has undergrowth is mostly useful in uh, and only if three power if it would be uh, somehow a 4-2, I don't think it would print a 4-2 with such a strong ability for 2, but if it were a 4-2, it would be amazing. <laughs> um, the problem is that uh, since it's only a 3-2, it can't kill most uh, you know important players unless you have something in the graveyard, and then you probably need to be Golgari to have something in the graveyard. Maybe if you have a lot of creatures, uh, this can work. Uh, but there's, a, there's another but this also funnily enough this card synergizes very well with uh, Galta so if you want to spend your rare wild cards on you know getting a full playset of Galtas the Crawl Harpooner Galta combo is really strong where you you know have a lot of uh, cards uh, in your graveyard you play this and it only gets you know plus x plus zero for uh, the duration of your turn but that's enough to uh, you know pay the mana cost for your galtas so uh, in that kind of deck if you're going for that kind of strategy it's a great pickup i, I don't think you can go wrong with this but uh, i'm just so sad that it doesn't kill the drakes most of the time uh, yeah here we have a great card as well rabbit bite Arger arguably <laughs> that's what i was trying to say arguably the best uh, you know green fight card and you get three of them uh, to begin with arguably the best green fight card uh, since it doesn't damage your own creature you know in a vacuum uh, of course if you're going for a dinosaur deck you want your uh, creatures to get damaged so in that case you want the fight cards instead but in most green cards if you're not going for that uh, kind of strategy uh, rabbit bite will be superior oh i almost skipped sapling migration uh, i think this is a great card uh, actually in a token strategy and that is because you can play it at two it's that versatility uh, if you compare this there's another sorcerer which gives you i think four tokens um, for four mana so that's cheaper than this but the added versatility of being able to play this for two is very relevant in uh, token strategies, which is uh, why I think if you're going for a token strategy, uh, you know, pick up four copies of this. I think you get two or three of this in a starter deck, though, so be, uh, be mindful of that. Uh, here is Song of Freyalis, uh, one of the best uncommon pickups if you're going for a token strategy again. Uh, the thing about green is that I think the reason that we see very little of Song of Freyalis is that most green creatures uh, that cost one or two mana are usually played because they're mana dorks and produce mana anyways. So you don't get too much value out of your Freyalis if your creatures already produce mana. But if you're going for a token deck uh, and you can give your tokens the ability to produce mana, you can ramp insanely fast. And being able to keep uh, you know, that last counter 
uh, on all your weird creatures uh, is what I think makes this. Uh, if this was just uh, you know plus one plus one for one turn, it wouldn't be that amazing. But being able to keep your counters on your tokens so that they can survive uh, some sweepers is really really good. That's what you need. That's what you need in those kind of decks. And the spore crown thalid. Uh, of course, if you're running a sap proling uh, token kind of strategy and you only have sap proling, then this is amazing. Else, uh, it's not that good. Thorn Lieutenant is uh, kind of the standard go to. But as you can see, like even this, I don't know wh why isn't this an uncommon, but for some reason they decided that this has to be a rare. Um, it's a solid green card. Uh, whenever it's, usually when it gets killed, it replaces itself. Um, it's an elf, so it gets buffed from all the, you know, elf lords and everything. Um, but unfortunately it's a rare. Uh, I think it's uh, too bad that they put this in the rare slot. Uh, moving on. Titanic growth is 100 times worth than the original, what was called, what, not wild growth. Uh, oh, I forgot the name. The, uh, it's a one, one green mana uh, plus three plus three uh, instant. Uh, this is just so much worse than that card. Uh, I've tried playing around with this and, you know, fight creatures and this, but it's so much lost value. If you have to play Titanic Growth to pump something and then play something to fight something, and most fight cards are also sorcery, like you deck becomes super awkward very quickly and you need very uh, you need very specific uh, a very specific series of events uh, for this card uh, to be worth it so uh, that's a no-go for me Blanchwood armor this actually works sometimes uh, I'm surprised when I looked at this I thought I was never going to play this but for because you get plus one plus one for each forest and because you can play this on something completely useless like a you know like a token or maybe a monodork or something in the late game actually this kind of works i think uh, of course most green cards either lose your value or you, you just get a one for one in most green cards but that's how green works but it's an extremely potent card when your opponent is tapped out and can't instantly you know shock your uh, the creature that you put this on. Uh, on the other hand, a more realistic uh, good card is Wild Growth Walker. I've seen, if you play the arena, you pro probably come across this in almost every green deck you've seen. Uh, gaining three life whenever you explore, and if you like only have explore creatures, you're going to gain so much life that all, uh, you know, all red decks uh, are going to cry and cry <laughs> and you're going to you know uh, drink their tears for um, uh, for a good portion of your games if you play wild growth walker it's uh, it's simply amazing and it it's in my opinion what makes the explore archetype work um, you can't race the wild growth walker that's the thing uh, you need to get rid of this creature uh, uh, other interesting cards. I really like uh, Colossal Majesty. It's uh, aggressively costed, I think, at three. I would expect, I would have expected this to be four or maybe three in the rare slot, uh, but luckily they decided to put this in the uncommon slot. Uh, and there's a lot of creatures uh, in green because green have so such powerful creatures that uh, a trigger. The, the Colossal Majesty. Unfortunately, a lot of them are rare, so... Um, yeah, but this can work out in some decks. Uh, probably not a 4 of. Uh, probably, I don't know. 1, 2, maybe 3. Uh, great card. Uh, and it's a fun card, I think, and uh, I'm really happy they put it in the uncommon slot. So that uh, more people have the uh, ability to play around with it. Uh, moving on. There's a nice dinosaur here, of course. Uh, unfortunately rare. <laughs> Again, I don't know what, what what speaks rare about this card. Why is this so rare? I don't know. Uh, I think this should have been an uncommon. 
uh, uh, but I shouldn't uh, maybe complain too much about oh generous stray is this a good card I think it's unfortunately not such a good card uh, the reason I say that is that there's currently a one if you want this kind of effect where you draw a card uh, for uh, you know three mana and you get the body out it's probably much better to go for the uh, artifact flyer uh, which has the same ability draw one card when it comes into play uh, but otherwise a fun card I really like drawing cards so <sighs> so yeah moving on other interesting another rare card this as well why is this rare <laughs> so many good rare cards uh, in green uh, yeah I don't think there's much to discuss on this page of course uh, this is decent in the Murfolk deck there's some uh, you know turbo fog uh, decks that run pause for reflection but if you if you don't have you know 12 plus uh, rare cards to spend on a deck then uh, going turbo fog will be very difficult ranging raptors here's a card that I think is underutilized I think this is uh, actually really good value for green uh, being a 2-3 body it can block a lot of creatures uh, I guess the problem is with dinosaurs the dinosaurs often want to be aggressive but if you could somehow I don't know I don't know how but if you could somehow build a more uh, you know uh, more controlling type of green deck I don't know if it's possible if you could uh, it seems like this would be great value uh, maybe couple this with red uh, have some uh, uh, deal to damage to all creatures kind of thing uh, going uh, yeah I think this could be a you know great pickup uh, and it even it's even aggressively costed enough I feel like that it could work in a uh, uh, that could work in a more aggressive type of deck. Steel Leaf Champion, of course, great card, but then again, why is it rare? <laughs> uh, oh, here's the uh, here's the Savage Stump that I talked about earlier. If you're going for a dinosaur deck and you want to fight things, then I think this is just the best card. It costs one green mana, fight something. You get some value out of it in the form of a counter. Uh, just solid, solid card for that kind of archetype. Uh, what more do we have? We have a Thrashing Bronton and a very solid dinosaur. Uh, there's not that many artifacts that you care about, I think, in the current meta game, but there's a lot of enchantments uh, floating around. So this often gets to kill uh, an enchantment, and being able to do this in instant speed is. Uh, it's really good. Uh, so a solid, solid uncommon pickup there. So what would I suggest then if I were to build a deck? Well, of course I could go with the you know classic uh, uh, pelt collector explorer kind of deck. Uh, but I think that deck, uh, while it is a very good deck, uh, it has the problem of uh, uh, not being very uh, versatile. That is, you you're probably not going to use uh, the cards in that deck. Uh, in some other deck and also uh, you need to have like uh, I don't know 30 uh, rare wild cards to complete that deck so instead what I'm going to suggest is a dinosaur alternative what I would go with is create something like uh, with your common wild cards create four community dinosaurs uh, use another four to get another uh, four uh, prey upon um, then we have it where is it uh, then go for a full four pack of ranging raptors and then unfortunately I think uh, if we're going to uh, play green you're going to have to waste uh, your rare wild cards and there's basically two uh, two cards I would consider wasting my rare wild cards on and it's either uh, going for a pelt collector even though uh, it's a dinosaur deck uh, pelt collectors are great uh, works great in that type of deck also and um, pelt collector works in you know 
any type of uh, uh, deck which uh, runs uh, strong creatures uh, or a more uh, maybe versatile card would be to run treasure maps uh, I think treasure map could work great in a green deck especially if you run Lana or Elves, you can run this out on turn two and scry, uh, you know, on your second turn and be well on your way to flipping your treasure cove. Because green, uh, as I mentioned before, is a color which has real problems with uh, getting card advantage. Uh, so having something like a treasure map, uh, a couple of treasure maps in your deck, I would, would probably even run four treasure maps if I ran green, uh, can be a great way to, uh, you know, uh, Kind of take care of that weakness uh, of green of not having good card uh, any way to you know accrue card advantage uh, actually if you're going green i think you're sadly uh, even forced to spend your mythic wild card to get you know a really good deck uh, i would go with uh, vivian reed uh, it's super solid right now uh, super solid uh, uh, Super solid pickup. Uh, you're probably not going to regret picking up uh, a couple of Vivian Reeds. Uh, maybe run uh, one to three uh, Vivian Reeds in your deck. Uh, it handles most uh, meta decks very well. Uh, it only basically struggles against Jeskai Control, uh, Teferi uh, has a very easy time to deal with this. Uh, but other than that, it's uh, another way to get, you know, card advantage, uh, kills flyers, which is game great against a great deck, uh, and uh, also great card advantage. It's not uh, unheard of to be able to, you know, emblem uh, your Vivian reads. Uh, so yeah, that's my recommendation for uh, creating a green deck. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching.